Candy Rose and Friends invite you to watch their TV show, Recovery Today. They teach from Candy's two 12-step workbooks that are scripture-based. God's written word, if acted on, empowers us to not only become addiction-free, but stay free. Powerful addiction-free testimonies are featured. Barbara, a nurse, shares the health dangers of using alcohol and drugs. To find the TV and radio networks they are on, go to recoverytodaytv.com. Hello, friends, and welcome to Recovery Today with Candy Rose. That's me. (laughs) And friends, Barbara Ferguson and Becky Brewer, my awesome co-hosts. Now, what we're doing is we're bringing you a teaching from the two 12-step workbooks that I wrote, Recovery Today, The Shepherd's Way, and they are on Amazon, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And if you would, you have my permission, if you'd like to use those books as a support group or Bible study. I've written four other books on there. One of them is my testimony as a former stripper and a prostitute. The name of that uh, book is Spirits of Seduction, Free at Last. And it's under Candy Rose, K-A-N-D-I-R-O-S-E. Now, today's teaching is taken from Volume 2, Lesson 12. The title is, Your Influence is Needed. Amen. The 12th step of the 12th truth to freedom is living a godly lifestyle. We help others recover. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This lesson pertains to the great commission that was given for every believer throughout the ages. God has not called everyone to be pulpit preachers, missionaries, or evangelists, but this commission is for all Christians. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a testimony of how and where Jesus revealed himself to them. Everyone, young or old, can be an influence by living a godly lifestyle so others can recover. Uh, Influence means to affect or alter by indirect or intangible intangible means to have an effect on the condition or the development of here are ways to make a difference be the light in action good works give god the glory making your influence like a ripple effect matthew 5:16 says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven If we're going to make a difference in the lives of others, we must walk the walk and not just talk the talk. We cannot intentionally sin and expect to go to heaven or be used by God. When we slip or say or do something ungodly, let us do as 1 John verse 9 tells us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us ask God for forgiveness and then ask for forgiveness of whoever we have hurt as well. We need to realize the importance of what we allow our five senses to come in contact Mm. with. Not only our salvation, but others are at stake as well. What we watch, read, or listen to affects our thinking and then our actions. Um, One of the sayings is that it gives Satan a foothold. Um, And we don't want to do that. We don't want to give him any opportunity to come into our homes or into our lives. So that's very important. Um, That influence um, influences other people that we come in contact with. Non-Christians are watching our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Are we allowing the holiness and the light of Jesus to shine in our daily lives? Be the light in attitude. People are watching your light shine or dim as you respond to adversity. Ooh, that's good. And, you know, one of the um, one of the saying I heard a long time ago that has always almost haunted me um, because it's so important, and that is that that your life may be the only Bible that some yeah. people ever right. read. That's right. That's right. And. Uh, you know, I certainly don't want to be responsible for someone seeing my life and being told I'm a Christian and then seeing me do something that's not at all um, godly. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that That's just, to me, that's just unforgivable. You know, I, this is why that, so many people don't want to go to church. Right. Because they say, oh, there's so many hypocrites. Well, yes, not everybody that goes to church is a Christian. See, that's the problem. And then there are those that 
are Christian, truly Christians, but uh, maybe they don't get to see their consistent Christian lifestyle. All they see is the inconsistency of the other people. And uh, and yeah, we're we're not going to be perfect, no. but that is no excuse to sin. Right. Because we have been given the Holy Spirit to be able to help us overcome sin. And and when we do mess up, we ask God's forgiveness. Right. But right. it's not a license for us to continue to, to sin. Right. But I'll tell you what, if, we, if we're not going to walk the walk, we, we sure not better be say, saying we're Christians because I believe that's a... <laughs> That's a bad. That's a bad place to be. Yeah. And the the more you you are set up to be a Christian, in other words, the the more uh, position of responsibility you have, mm-hmm. yes. the more um, if you're a Sunday school teacher, if you're a pastor, if you're on TV, whatever you're doing, no, you're not going to be perfect because there is no one perfect but Jesus. But um, you have to constantly be thinking about what you're doing. Uh, what it looks like to someone else. That's right. That's true. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Right. I remember uh, I had a thrift store as uh, as a Christian years ago, and I didn't have a phone at the time and no cell phone. And there was a bar right next door, and right inside the bar was a payphone. It was a little bitty, little bitty foyer type thing uh, before you actually got into the bar. So I wasn't really going into the bar. I was trying to rationalize it into the bar. But what if somebody see me go mm-hmm. in that door and they think I'm going to go in there and I'm in there drinking? Right. And they know that I'm a Christian. Right. And God told me I need to not do that. I don't care what it may, if it looks, if it doesn't look good to people. For instance, if you're living with somebody and you're not sleeping with them, if people know that they're in your house, even though you may not be, you know, having fornication with them or whatever it's, it's the idea that somebody else will probably think you are yeah you know just right. because because they because the world thinks because that you would not be able to overcome that even if though you may be able to but still that's a temptation you don't need to get yourself mm-hmm. into but anyway, it's the it's appearance of evil the appearance yeah it, yeah that's, that's right. good that's good matthew 5 verse 14 says you are the light of the world A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. It is not hard to have a good attitude when there is no trial or adversity happening. When a crisis occurs, the natural reaction causes all kinds of emotions. Fear, grief, anger, stress, hopelessness, and much more are some of the responses. Therefore, we need the Holy Spirit, our helper. If we listen to his voice, he will not let the enemy put out our light. He is our counselor, our comforter, encourager. Yeah. He reminds us that we are not without hope because we are the children of God and our God will intervene on our behalf. Yes. Share the light. Light up. Tell what God has done mm. for you. Do not hide it under a bushel. Matthew 5.15 says, Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Trials and adversity come to everyone in this world, and non-Christians are looking to us to see how we handle the hard times. Mm. The enemy wants to snuff out your light during those times. He takes that bushel basket and places it over our heads, so to speak, trying to let our light go out. I say our head because he works through the thought processes to make us feel hopeless. We are not hopeless, though, ever. We have a God who loves us. Yes, yes. Let us remember through this message about that bushel basket. And when you feel self-pity or blaming arise, stop and say, No, devil, I will light up for Jesus. Mm. You will not put out my light. I will make a difference by my attitude, my lifestyle, and sharing the light and love of Jesus. And Barbara? I know you can relate to this. <laughs> I can. And, you know, I heard something just recently that just really stands out to me. It did at the time. And now I know why, because it was for this show, I believe. And that is the place of your greatest pain is a place where God will use you to help people the most. Wow. Mm, that's Amen. good. And yes. um, the reason they said that is as I went through something about three years ago that just uh, shook my entire being. Um, I thought I would never be the same. I thought I would never be whole again. 
But God has, over the years, he has, by me turning to him with my pain instead of to drugs or alcohol or men or something like that, I've turned to God with my pain. And he's healed that pain. And what I feel in my heart before I ever heard that is that God is going to use that thing that Mm. happened for me to minister to other people that are in that fresh pain that I was in when I was so deeply. Um, I didn't want to function. And to be honest with you, for the first time in my life, I didn't want to go on living, but thank God I had that relationship with him and I was able to turn to him. And I know that it's not, or let me put it this way. I don't want that to be for nothing. I want to help other people wow. that are in that position yes. by the pain I went through because I want that pain to be used for something good. Yes. That oh, is that's so, so good. good. And that's that is so, so true. And that's what he wants to do in your life. Yeah. And uh, this really means a lot to me because, uh, you know, nobody ever told me. Nobody ever told me. You want to be free from your tormenting addiction? 15 years of, of using being an IV drug user in my neck. Nobody ever told me, oh, you want to be free? Get into the Word of God. Because that's going to free you. And so now I just make it my absolute business to go into the jails and go into the rehabs and talk to you and tell you that there is power in the Word of God yes. to set you free. Yes. And so this reaching out and helping others, yeah, it, it means a lot to me. Um, because I was 35 years old and nobody my whole life ever said, if you want to be set free, get into the word of God, because that has the power to do it. Yes. Oh, that's so good. People are broken. They are just so broken Yeah, and they're so ready. They're so hungry or the, you know, the, when I go into the, the jails and the rehabs and I start sharing uh, my testimony with them, it's, they're just they're ready. They're, it's, yes. it's almost like they're ripe for harvest. They're yes. ready to be plucked and picked and, and healed, yes. and they're hungry for it, and yes. they're broken. So we are at a time where we can't keep it to ourselves, That's so right. we've got to just share it and share it and share the love uh, of, of Christ, too, not just the power, but the love behind it. Amen. Good. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you a clip. We're going to show you a clip of Barbara. She's an <laughs> RN, and I asked her to share some of the horrible things that can happen to your body and your mind from taking alcohol or drugs. And we're going to show you one of those clips right now. Hi, friends. My name is Barbara Ferguson, and I'm a registered nurse. And Candy Rose has asked me to help her share with you another segment of our addiction health dangers. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you about the dangers of cocaine. Cocaine's effects on the body include increased blood pressure and heart rate, dilated pupils, insomnia, and loss of appetite. Cocaine has led to many severe adverse health reactions, including cardiac arrhythmias, which is irregular heart rates, ischemic heart conditions, such as a sudden cardiac arrest, convulsions, stroke, and even death. In some users, the long-term use of inhaled cocaine has led to a unique type of respiratory system, and chronic snorting of cocaine has led to the erosion of the upper nasal cavity. Drug overdoses include agitation, increased body temperature, hallucinations, convulsions, and death. Please don't use cocaine. Give your life to Jesus instead. He loves you. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com to find faith-based resources. There is help. There is hope. Well, we also now want to show you a testimony. We're always going to insert somebody's testimony, one or two testimonies uh, in here. So you, because this is what it's all about. We want you to know that Jesus is the answer and that no matter what you've been Mm. through, you can be forgiven and God wants to use your life. So these testimonies show that no matter what kind of devastation you've been in, God wants to turn it around and restore you. Well, friends, this is wonderful. We are out here at the Recovery Rally here in Augusta, Arkansas. And uh, you just seen the intro with all those ministries behind us. And 
I had the wonderful privilege of interviewing Pastor Larry Steele and his wife Tammy here. And these are their grandchildren. <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> I said, yeah, come on, bring them in. <laughs> it's windy out here. It might be a little dark, but let me tell you, we're here because we're going to have Pastor Larry brag on Jesus because he knows what it's like to go through devastation, which some of you watching maybe are going through the same thing. So, Pastor Larry, would you just uh, tell the our viewers, uh, what's been going on in your life? Hey Amen. I just, uh, I just want to talk about what Jesus done for me. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, we fall into addiction, but there's a there's a reason that we fall into that addiction. A lot of people don't uh, bring that out, and that's why we have testimonies. You know, uh, whenever I was five years old, there were some things that happened to me that was done to me by a family member, and. Uh, I tell you, that, that caused a spiral that just went out of control with me. And uh, by the time I was nine then, I started drinking with my dad. And uh, uh, things just got worse and worse. Uh, uh, by the time I was uh, 18, I, I jumped into a relationship that I had no business being in. And it all started. You see, that's we need to get to the root of the problem. Nobody just yes. wakes up one day and says we want to be an addict or we choose to be an addict. I was molested at five years old by a family member that started yes. this mm. and, and uh, so uh, we just need to keep in mind when we see somebody there's a reason that yes. they're doing the things that they're doing and I tell you whenever I was 18 I married a woman that I shouldn't have married and 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 we was just wrong for each other and we lived in a terrible marriage together our kids was put through stuff uh, I was an alcoholic I drank and it, it just it just spired out of control and I thought I'd get it under control but it, it just got worse and worse until uh until my second marriage come to an end and that's uh that's whenever God, I was mad at God. I didn't want to have nothing to do with God, and God got a hold of me. You see, uh, we think that uh, that we choose or we find God, but actually God finds us. Yes. He found me one day yes. after all the devastation, all the things that I went through. He found me at a place where I was come to a church to go in and, and pay a man some money. And I thought I was, I said, God, I'm going in there, I'm going to do this, and I'm coming out. But I tell you, I went in that day. Uh, it's been, uh, it's been uh, nine years ago now. In 2012, I went into a church to pay a man some money that I owed him, and, and, and I made a deal out with God. I said, I'm just going in there. This is all there is to it. Nothing's going to happen. But I tell you, I, I got in there that day, and this is how much God loves us. I got in there that day, and God got a hold of me. I don't know what the man was preaching. I don't know what songs was being played, but I know that God built a fire inside of me that day. And I tell you, he's put a burning desire Woo! inside of my heart Woo! to reach out to the people that's been lost and broken yeah, yeah. And, and, and is caught up in addiction or are caught up in things that just happened. Yes. Yes. That, that where they was just hurt and destroyed, yes. baby, by somebody. God will restore everything that the yes. enemy has took from you. I tell yes. you, I got to a place where I was homeless. I got to a place where, where, I, where I couldn't uh, uh, keep a job. But I tell you, that day at that altar, God built a fire inside of me, and he has, uh, he has restored my life. I'm now a pastor here in Augusta, <laughs> Arkansas. Woo! Every other Friday night, we have a, a meeting called Exodus. It is just for the broken. Aww. It's just for the lost. It's Aww. just for somebody that needs to hear that, that I'm not the only one that's been through that yes. stuff. I'm not the only one that's had that problem. Yes. And, and so uh, God has set us up in this ministry over here, and he's, uh, he's linked me up with a beautiful wife that, yes, that knows how her. to pray and, and knows how to touch God and has Aww. the same heart for the broken Aww. that I do. Aww. And it's a privilege to be here in Augusta today with uh, with Brother Jeff and uh, Candy Rose and my wife and my grandchildren. Yeah. And uh, and that's about all I got today. But okay. amen. All right, tell them where your church is. Our church is uh, is uh, 1396 Walnut Street in Augusta, Arkansas. Anytime you're welcome there. On, uh, like I said, on Friday nights, every other Friday, we have a meeting called Exodus. We feed people. We just uh, bring them in. We just love on them. We're not there to condemn anybody. We're just there to tell you about a man named Jesus Woo! that can set you free. Woo! 1396 Walnut Street, Augusta, Arkansas. You know, you've heard the testimonies from that little clip we showed you. And you've heard us talking about Jesus. 
wouldn't you like to be able to share your testimony mm. and be a part of what God is doing? But you've got to say no to the sin. You can't Amen. have Jesus and hang on right. to it. The Bible talks about repentance. Mm-hmm. And repentance is, is having a change of mind and a change of heart and be willing to turn. Mm, be willing to turn from what you're doing. If you're willing, the Holy Spirit comes inside and gives you the power. And you can walk the walk. Mm-hmm. And you can be part of this end-time army that he's raising Amen. up. Right. And you can have an influence. Matter of fact, who knows? Maybe your own family and friends will sit up and take notice when they see that there's a change in your life. Amen. And that now that you're living for Jesus with your whole heart. So now we're going to believe that you are going to say this prayer with yes, us. Yes. That you're going to say it with your whole heart. Yes. Just mean it with your whole heart. Holy Spirit knows, and He knows every rotten, lousy thing that's ever happened to you in your life. And believe me, it's not God's fault. God is a good God. There's a devil out there that's Mm -hmm. been been causing havoc in your life, even through addictions or just even the heartache. And God is not the cause of the evil things that happen. The Bible says, John 10, 10, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. So don't blame him. Just live for him. Give your life to him. He loves you. He wants you. He's been drawing you all this time. So yes. just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm willing, I'm, I'm willing, willing to leave the old life behind, to, to leave, leave the old life, life behind and live for you and, and live, live for you. you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank, Thank you, you for, for dying, dying on the cross, cross for me. me. Amen. 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 And friends, get into church. It is just vital. It's as much as our physical body needs needs water and needs food, we need the, the word of God and we need to get into church. We need to be around other believers yes. that can come yes. up beside you and encourage you and strengthen you yes. and help you to grow. So please get into church. It's very important. Yes. Read your Bible and talk to the one who loves you, which is Jesus. Yes. Um, Psalms 107 two says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So now, since you can walk the walk, go and brag on Jesus. Yes, amen. And, you know, we would really love to hear from you. We'd like to hear what God's doing in your life. Um, Maybe you said this prayer. um, Let us know what happened and how things are going for you. And we'd love to answer your questions, too, if you have any. Just go to our website. It's addictionfreetv.com and click on the email button. And also, uh, we would really appreciate your prayers. Um, we, we are in millions of homes on uh, seven different Amen. networks. And we, you know, we could really use prayer. Um, and also, if you go on there, um, there's a donate button. And if you would be willing to help us as a partner or just give a one-time gift, we'd, we really could use your help in getting this show out to even more and more homes. Because yes. we want to touch every life that we can for Jesus. Amen. Yes, amen. And remember, Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. And that you can have recovery today and every day, the shepherd's way. Amen. Yes, amen. My name is Tim Bumpus. I am the president of Project New Start Treatment Center in Newport, Arkansas. We run a men's treatment center and a women's treatment center. We also have a pregnancy center. We just opened up a home for mothers with their children to come to treatment. And we also have a transition homes after you graduate. We put you in an apartment. We help you get a job. If you want to get your life together, we have a perfect place to do that. If you need us, give us a call at 870-523-8413. Or go to our website at Project New Start dot org thank you and god bless you uh shalom is a place in life where nothing is missing and nothing is broken and so what we offer is a nine-month residential program we do have a men's center and we have a women's center and those two are separate but we offer a nine-month program and our prayer for those who are coming into it is that through a relationship with jesus christ they would more and more begin to live a life where all of the missing parts of their life are brought back together and all of the broken parts of their life are mended because we truly believe that Jesus has the power 
to bind up the brokenhearted and to restore all the things that are lost as part of addiction. Addiction Free Ministry presents powerful resources written by its CEO, Candy Rose. Her autobiography, Spirits of Seduction, proves Christ can transform any lifestyle from X rated to G rated. Candy Rose believes testimonies build faith, encouraging others they too can have that new life in Christ. Go to Amazon.com or their website, AddictionFreeMinistry.com, to receive these life changing resources for yourself or a loved one. There is help, there is hope. Depression, fear, worry, broken heart, loneliness are just some of the eight negative emotions that are in Candy Rowe's latest book, A Bible Study. Peace, not stress. Trust the shepherd. Sheep are social creatures with emotions remarkably like ours. You will discover some interesting facts why Jesus refers to us as his sheep and him as our shepherd. Great biblical leaders like David, Joseph, and Moses learned some valuable lessons from the pasture. They saw how their own presence brought peace to their timid and fearful sheep. Since their presence made the difference, they also trusted their heavenly shepherd's presence and overcame great obstacles. As we study sheep behavior and God's word, we become aware of his presence, enabling us to have peace, not stress, trusting the shepherd. His presence makes the difference, bringing peace, comfort, hope, and purpose. For your copy of Peace Not Stress, go to AddictionFreeTV.com. Hello, my name is Becky Brewer, and I have a ministry more than a mugshot. And I have that ministry because I was incarcerated in five states across the country. I now do a recovery meeting at Lakeview Assembly of God in Hot Springs, Arkansas, every Monday night from 530 to 630. And I do this. It's biblical. We put the Word of God in our everyday life. We apply the Word of God to recovery uh, and how to break free. It's Break Free Recovery Group. Monday night, Lakeview Assembly of God, 530 to 630. Come join us and let's share freedom through Christ together. Thank you. Tell me how you came to know me. Was it at some preacher's plea? Were you all bound up with worry? When he came to set you free Did it take you your whole lifetime To release the debt you owe Or did you answer him the first time And relinquish all control Need to hear somebody testify. I need to hear somebody say that you were lost and at the bottom. Hi, friends. This is Candy Rose. Barbara, Becky, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Please come back every week if you can. Also, please go to our website, recoverytodaytv.com. To find out how you can watch or listen to our show in your area. We are not only on TV across the United States in millions of homes, but radio and podcasts as well. Jesus loves you, and so do we. Were you born to see?